Today we'll show you how to make a beautiful and super bright 70 inch LED panel for free without spending a single penny. Well, at least for me, I didn't spend any money on this. This thing is huge. It almost takes up the entire wall in a small room. Someone gave it away for free for obvious reason. The screen was broken. But the TV still turned on and the backlight was still working. So in this video, I'll show you how I tear it down all the way to the individual LED strips and use a Frankenstein power supply to power the entire LED panel. Let's get started. So let me show you how it's being connected together. The strip LED here, one strip here, one strip here, all the way down, 14 rows. Okay. Each strip LED contains 15 LED. So from here, going all the way to this end right here, right in the middle. And then it continues another strip right here, go all the way to the other side. So we get an LED strip on the left, another strip on the right. The left and the right are connected in series. So we got a 30S connection. And then the first row is being connected to the bottom row by parallel connection. So from here to here is parallel, same to the third row, all the way down 14 rows in parallel. So a total of 420 LEDs, they're connected in 30S, 14P connection. I'll show you my setup here. I have a 60 volt and a 30 volt variable power supply and first I tried it with a 60 volt power supply and I went all the way to 60 volts but still didn't have enough voltage to power the LEDs so I have to use another one another power supply but only have 30 volts I connect the two power supply in series here, yeah, so positive to negative here so I can get up to 90 volts max out of the two power supply and now the LEDs will start to light up at 75 volts 45 on this side 30 on this side 75 volts total it will start to light up right so now I'm gonna start increase the voltage until we got to the brightest level and let's see at what voltage we got to the brightest level 77 78 79 80 80 volts is stable now at 80 volts 81 volts let's go for a little bit more 85 it's pretty bright now So as you can see from my test, it requires 85 volts to power a single strip of LED from here to right here in the middle. That's one strip. So if I want to use a current configuration right now, which is 30S, 30 in series, it will require at least 170 volts DC to power all of these LED. 170 volts is too high of a voltage for me to get anything, any power supply or anything that can get to 170 volts. So um, I think I'm just going to go with the 85 volts, which is one single strip. And then connect in parallel, all of these strips together in parallel. So it's going to be a 15S 28P instead of 30S 14P.
these LEDs require 80 volt DC and I don't have any 80 volt DC power supply so I'm using three AC to DC uh, adapters these are the Apple iBook adapter and they put out about 25 volt DC this one is an HP printer adapter and it gives out 31 volt DC so I put all of them in series right here this is just for testing I'm gonna solder them together later all of them connected in series and they're producing about 81 volts DC now let's put this to the test I'm just trying to test the LED strip on the top here from here to here so I just hooked it up to the uh, power adapter and now I'm going to turn on the switch let's see if that would work there we go it works so my previous test with 80 volt DC it worked but the LED wasn't bright enough so this time I want to increase the voltage a little bit more this time I got about 86 about 87 volt DC and I'm using three Apple adapters and one 12 volt adapter so each of these is 25 and this one is 12 so a total about 87 volts let's try and see if it gets better and start now there we go the light is quite brighter there's one thing very important I need to mention is that for this method you cannot use an AC adapter that has three prongs like this one here this is an HP adapter for HP printers the output is 31 volts it's got a higher voltage output but I cannot use this uh, for this project because if I have two of these and I connect them in series and they're gonna short out that's because the ground prong on the AC line is connected to the ground on the DC line so, so let me demonstrate here we got the DC output cable here it comes from this adapter and I got my meter here and I'm going to measure continuity test put one on the DC output negative cable and one on the ground AC input you see there they're connected together and because they all share the same ground the ground from the AC input of the first adapter second adapter ground to the output of the first adapter and ground to the output of the second adapter they all share the same ground if you connect ground from the, the second adapter to positive or first adapter together right so you can get a series connection it will be the same as connecting ground from the first adapter to positive of the first adapter together right because they all share the same ground so that's why you connect this to this it will short out and that will not work so that's why all these adapters that I use for this project they all have the same two prong AC input line same for the Apple adapter there are only two prongs and there's no ground prong so besides using three or four power adapters to power the LEDs there are also a couple more ways you can power the LEDs first one is use a LED driver or a DC to DC boost converter like this one here uh, this one is capable of putting out 120 volts DC maximum so you can input uh, a lower voltage I would say this for this one uh, higher than 12 volts uh, up to 100 volts DC and then the output can give you up to 120 volts DC 
so it boosts the low voltage to high voltage so you can run your LED so in this case I can get up to 85 volts to run my uh, LEDs with this converter uh, this one costs approximately $30 or you can use a variable power supply like this one here uh, this one can only go up to 60 volts DC so it doesn't work for this project so if you want to use something like this you need to get a higher voltage a variable power supply uh, which can go up to about 80 to 90 volts DC and it's really hard to find for those power supply and it's really expensive and it will defeat the purpose uh, of this project because if you spend more money on the power supply itself it will cost more than just buying the whole LED panel all by itself and for me for this project I choose to use many power supply put them together because this is something lying around and I got for free they all have broken connectors so uh, they are useless anyway right so let me show you what I've got so far this is the IC line input and I've got all of the wires together so all four wires together so that way I only have one plug instead of four and here is the DC line output we got four wires here they are connected in series so here just put in some heat shrink tubing for insulation I also solder an XT60 connector so you can connect to the LED panel my next step is to make a dimmer switch using this two position switch here so on the power supply here I've got three Apple adapters so each one is 25 volt total of 75 volts and I have a 12 volt adapter here so it all in series so total of 87 volts but this adapter here is not just 12 volt it can also output 5 volt DC so I can either get 5 or 12 volt DC this is the cable of the 12 volt adapter and it's got three wires black is ground yellow is 12 white is 5 volt so all I have to do is now to connect this switch to this wire so we got three wires here right we got two position so one wire is going to go to the white 5 volt another wire yellow wire is going to go to the 12 volts right and the third wire here is the red wire which is going to be the output wire which will go straight to the uh, positive terminal and the black wire is the negative terminal of the whole uh, adapter so that when I flip on the switch on this position which is the 5 volt position right I'm gonna get 5 volt from here and 75 volts from here right this is unchanged to so total of 80 volts the light is gonna be dim if I change the position to this side here it's gonna be 12 volts from here plus 75 volts from here it's gonna be 87 volt total and the light is gonna be brighter so this is a very simple and easy way to make a dimmer switch without using a complicated or expensive circuit board that's because we have a 12 volt and 5 volt power supply combination this is actually a power supply for an external hard drive that can run either 5 or 12 volt DC it's being plugged in right now so let's try and turn the switch on which is at the off position right now so let's turn on the level 1 position 79.5 volts we good off now let's turn on the other side level 2 86.6 87 volts that's perfect right so now it's time to work on the LED panel itself we got 14 rows of LED bars like this one here and it's divided into two halves so 14 rows on this side 
and then 14 rows on this side so my plan is to put all of them in parallel so I'm gonna put 14 rows of these on the left here in parallel and then the 14 rows of these bars on the right here in parallel and then I'm gonna connect the two wires together also in parallel on both sides so next I'm gonna show you how I connect them all in parallel the LED bars each one comes out with two wires right positive and one negative and you can see here let me zoom in and show you so it's got a positive and a negative right but also on the LED bar itself it's got two round dots here okay these are copper terminals and these terminals are the same as the ones on the wire so if I take a continuity test and test the round dot right here on the plus with the wire on the top here which is the blue wire the blue wire is also a positive terminal so if I take a continuity test this blue wire is also connected to this dot here next to the positive terminal so every single LED bar I got two terminals one is the wire you can use a wire or you can use that round dot here and you can solder onto that round dot is a copper terminal so the green wire is going to go onto the top dot round dot right there and the red wire is going to go to the bottom round dot and the two LED bars will be connected in parallel and I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the LED bars and that should be it I've already finished on the right side of the panel so let me show you right here so for example this one here the two wires right one on the top is the black one which is a negative wire go to the dots solder onto the dot on the top bar right here which is negative the bottom wire which is the white wire which is the positive wire it goes onto the bottom dot which is the positive uh, terminal right there all right so I'm finally done show you what I got here all of these wire connected in parallel and then we got a main wire right in the middle here the reason why I put it right in the middle instead of like somewhere on the top because I want to spread out the current but this wire is quite thin so it's not going to be able to handle the current if I just hook the main wire right on the top here and the main wire goes up all the way to the back of the TV go out to this side and then it's connected to this wire on this side and I'll connect it in parallel the wire on this side which goes down the same way as the other side and connected it right in the middle here right there, right in the middle Right, so time to plug this in. Give it a try. Right. You ready? Boom! Wow, that is right. I've got my Lexi Class diffuser on. Let's see what it looks like. That's beautiful. I've just put the frame back on and it looks quite nice with the frame on now let's try on the LED panel I have plugged in the cable let's turn it on this is the low setting which is 80 volt DC okay and it's consuming six about six watts 
Okay. Turn off now. Now let's turn on the high setting. You see it's a lot brighter and it's consuming about 60 watts. So another way to power this LED screen is to use a DC to DC boost converter. And that way you can use a battery like this to boost the voltage up to the LED panel voltage and you can make it portable. So right now I'm having a Cobalt 24 volt battery on my power tool and I just hook it up to my uh, adapter here. It's just a homemade adapter that can run my wires to the input of the boost converter and the output I can adjust it. Uh, up to 120 volt DC so input is 24 volt DC output up to 120 volt DC and it's adjustable right now it's at 50.54 volts and I'm gonna increase it so right now we're at about 79.79 .79 volts I know the LED will lit up around 80 volts so um, I'm gonna set the OK button and that will turn on the output okay okay you can see there it lights up on the bottom here uh, just lightly because this just enough voltage to light up but uh, the brightness is a little bit low and let's increase it a little bit more yeah you can see it's more bright on the bottom now it's brighter on the bottom now 87.6 that's close enough and the LED panel is quite bright right now let me zoom out and see the light level it's very bright right now so that's how you can use a DC to DC boost converter to run this LED panel the advantage is you can use a battery like this and make this light portable the disadvantage is because you run on battery it won't last long only limited to your battery size now I want to bring this outside and give it a try well, I'm gonna feel right now it's pretty dark Let's give it a try That's all for now. Next video we will show you how to mount the TV on the wall using nothing but a couple pieces of 2x4 pieces of wood. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.